there's uh, uh, certainly uh, a lot of uncertainty. You know, we're watching and just uh, we can't believe what's happening, uh, having our our nation's capital building being literally overrun by thousands of people, gunshots being fired, tear gas being used. One person, I understand, just in the last few minutes died of their gunshot wounds, which is truly unfortunate. Um, it's a, it's, we are all in a state of disbelief. Uh, can't believe that this is happening in our country and um, shocked beyond, beyond words. Uh, many of us are disappointed, I guess is a word that comes up, disgusted, uh, horrified. Uh, it truly is a, um, this is not the United States of America. This is not how we, we conduct business. We, we stand for you know, First Amendment rights, freedom of speech, peaceful demonstrations, but uh, this has gone beyond that, and it's, I think it's truly unfortunate for our country. Back in December, sir, you were one of the congressmen who signed on to the yeah. amicus brief supporting the president's, uh, one of the lawsuits brought on behalf of the president by the state of Texas to essentially, uh, uh, which would have essentially changed the outcome of the election had it been upheld. You said at the time that you wanted to ensure the American people have faith in our elections and our constitution. Today's uh, um, actions were taken by people carrying flags for the president, chanting the president's name, and uh, voicing the belief that this election was stolen from the president, the false belief. Are you concerned at all in retrospect that Signing on to the amicus brief uh, might have helped to contribute to the atmosphere that led to today. It might have given some people hope or false belief that this election could or should be overturned. Uh, Mr. Robbins, absolutely not. I, I don't think that um, my support of the um, amicus brief in any way should have led to the kind of uh, actions we're seeing today. What I was, uh, my intention at the attention of all 125 others who signed the amicus brief was to ask the court to look at uh, the states that were in question that had election processes that were in question uh, to see if there was anything that fell out of the uh, ability that they as states had under the constitution and how we conduct elections. And so my intention through that was by answering those questions to absolutely give faith uh, on the part of people in our election process. So uh, I don't think that there's any connection there. And uh, unfortunately, the Supreme Court, because they decided the state of Texas did not have standing, uh, did not hear the case, but they said it was not rejected on its merits. And so I think moving forward uh, in the future, we still have some very important questions to have answered um, through the court system as we look at the 2020 election. 